Let's go ahead and uh, go into our lesson now. We're doing um, lesson number two in the uh, study guide, How to Interpret Scripture. And the title is The Origin and Nature of the Bible. And the first paragraph says, The way we see and understand the origin and nature of Scripture greatly impacts the role that the Bible plays in our lives and in the church at large. How we interpret the Bible is significantly shaped and influenced by our understanding of the process of revelation and inspiration. When we want to understand Scripture correctly, we first of all need to allow the Bible to determine basic parameters of how it should be treated. We cannot study mathematics with, um, with the empirical methods employed in biology or sociology. We cannot study physics with the same tools used to study history. In a similar manner, the spiritual truths of the Bible will not be known and understood correctly um, by atheists, me atheistic methods that approach the Bible as if God did not exist. Instead, our interpretations of Scripture need to be taken seriously. The divine human dimension, take seriously the divine human mention of God's Word. Hence, what we need for a proper interpretation of Scripture is that we approach the Bible in faith rather than with methodological skepticism or doubt. So the lesson brings up a good point that our preconceived ideas and assumed premises and mindsets and beliefs that we hold before we go to the Bible impact uh, what we uh, learn from the Bible and how we view it. The lesson emphasizes the godless mindset and how if no, one does not believe in God, then when they look at the Bible, they will not ba understand basic biblical truths. Maybe they will see it as a bunch of myths or fairy tales. There's no doubt about that, pre that pre preconceived ideas have a huge impact. But is it only preconceived ideas of a godless mindset? What about other ones? How about this? Uh, this is the preconceived idea. That the Bible teaches about a Messiah that is to come, and when he comes, he will use the might and power to overthrow the enemies of Israel and rule the earth with a strong iron hand. Did those ideas corrupt how the Pharisees in Christ's day viewed the scriptures? What about today? Do any religious groups believe the same idea about the second coming, that he will come with power and might to destroy the enemies with physical might and rule the nations with a rod, a rod of iron. Will that interpret how, will that impact how we interpret scripture? How about this as a, a belief we have before we even go to the scripture? The Bible is to be taken as it reads without reasoning things through. The Bible said it, I believe it, that settles it, who are you to question? Well, I have known of, of psychotic patients who have actually gouged out their eyes because of the text where Jesus says, your eye offends thee, pluck it out. Should they, should they take the Bible as it reads? Do you take the Bible as it reads? If you've looked at something that was offensive, will you pluck your eyes out? Or do you reason it through and realize maybe it means something other than literally plucking out your eye? How about other passages in Scripture? Can we also reason through those, or do we just take it as it reads? How about this one? Before we go to the Bible. The Bible is to be taken alone, divorced from science, nature, and life experiences. If that's how we read the Bible, will it impact how we interpret things? Our preconceived ideas and beliefs. How about this one as a preconceived idea? God's law functions like human law. A system of Im imperial rules without natural consequence that requires God to oversee it as a judicial magistrate and inflict punishment. If that's the belief you have before you read scripture, Will it impact the lessons you learn? In fact, could it cause you to be a strong Bible believer that goes out and actually misrepresents God? The lesson also points out the value of faith and contrasts faith with skepticism. To be sure, a person who denies God and has the belief that the Bible is nothing but myths and fairy tales and then goes to read it, will not be reading it to discover God or God's truth. They'll be reading it to find fault and to find things that uh, they can use to mock those who believe in God. There's no question about that. But are these the only two options? That we approach the Bible with faith or we approach it with skepticism? Can a person have faith in the wrong God and read Scripture? Remember, Jesus said at the end of time that will come to him in his, in his name. Say, I prophesied in your name. We cast out demons in your name. Not in the name of Buddha, in the name of Jesus. He says, get ye hence, ye workers of iniquity. I never knew you. 
What happens when people do believe in God and have faith in the Scripture, but they have the wrong view of God when they study Scripture? What happens then? Well, there were people 2,000 years ago that crucified Christ. Do you remember hearing about the Salem witch trials? Who conducted the Salem witch trials? It was the Puritans who believed in the King James Bible and themselves had been persecuted by the Catholics and fled to America, but they believed the Bible and ended up persecuting. How about Christians today who want to pass certain laws in the country they live in order to make others practice or live their life the way the Christian believes? How about another option instead of just faith or skepticism? How about have not having faith, but also not being a skeptic? How about being somebody who just doesn't really know, and that yet they have an honest heart to discover? You know, I don't really know what the Bible teaches. I don't have faith in it, but I don't necessarily think it's wrong. I just have never said it. And I go to the Bible with an open, honest heart, seeking truth. Are there people like that that might go to the Bible? Yeah, so I don't think these are the two options only. I think there's other people, and I think we've all heard of stories of individuals who had an honest heart searching for truth um, who were studying the scriptures and didn't know what they meant. Remember the, uni uh, the uh, eunuch, the Ethiopian that Philip met, was a person, I think, along those lines. Sunday's lesson.